Shalom. Today, I want to give you a very simple key to hearing, knowing, and walking in the will of God. First, I want to tell you a story, something that happened to me when I was seeking the will of God, trying to hear the voice of God. It was a very big decision. And uh, I took a day to pray, to fast. I started walking in some hills uh, outside of where I lived and just took the day to be with God. I even laid down and took a nap just to try to relax and sort of let things go. And it came to the end of the day, the late afternoon, the sun was going down. I needed to get home. And I thought, you know, I haven't heard anything from God. This is a big decision. And I started walking. And before I knew it, a word popped into my mind. And the word was Joseph. Now, I knew from the story of Joseph what God was calling me to do, what he was speaking to me was to stay put where I was to serve faithfully, and he would take me to the next step, which was what I was concerned about and longing for. The point is that when we place ourselves before God, when we take time to listen, even if we don't hear immediately, what we are doing is we are opening our life to God and God then has a chance to speak to us, particularly when we're yielding ourselves to him. So there's a, a, an incredible event uh, in the life of Yeshua. You all know it. It's when he is in the, uh, in Hebrew, we, we call it Gatshmanim. It's the place of the olive crushing or olive grove, but it, it really is where the olives were crushed to make the oil, which is an incredible image in and of itself to bring us to the place where we will be ready to do what God calls us to do. Yeshua, of course, said in that time in the garden, he said, Lord, if there's any way uh, for this assignment to pass, please, I, I'm not really relishing dying on the cross. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. This is essentially the key to what we're talking about. And friends, I, I want to just reflect for a moment on the miracle of the human will. Think about it. God created us with the ability to disobey him, with the ability to rebel, uh, to be idolatrous, uh, to just mess everything up big time, which of course we can see in human history. Uh, but his, his goal was that we would then return to him and say, not my will, but your will be done. And in some incredible way, what that does is it releases the, the plan, the purpose of God and the power of God through our lives when we, in a sense, place our will back before him and say, God, thank you. You have created me with this freedom. I choose to follow you. You're not making me. I choose to follow you. I want your will. There's a wonderful verse in the book of John. It's John chapter 7, verse 17, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, it says, if any man desires to do God's will, God will show him of the matter, whether it is of God or of man. Let's come back to that. If anyone desires to do God's will, if it's really my longing that God would do his will and his plan and his, uh, his destiny through me, and that I'm not independently trying to chart my own course, then God will show me. He's able to show me that. Now, I want to uh, wrap up with two more very um, significant examples in Scripture. One uh, is the story of young Samuel. You'll remember that God called to him uh, twice, and he thought it was Eli. He thought it was the, the old priest, and the old priest said, no, no, it's not me. Finally, uh, the old priest realized that God was speaking to Samuel, and he said, go back and say, this is what you should say to God when you hear him call your voice, speak, Lord, for your servant is hearing. And this concept of hearing, lishmoa, in Hebrew is both to hear and to walk out and to obey. It's really to, to, to receive and then to do what it is that you're receiving. Samuel did that. And of course, we know the rest of the story. He became an incredible prophet. He prophesied over David and uh, David became uh, the grandpapa of, uh, of the Messiah, Yeshua. Another example is Miriam, Mary, who became the mother of the Messiah because when the angel Gabriel spoke to her, 
uh, and and captured her attention and and basically was was saying you're going to be you're, you're the, the Messiah the Son of God is going to come through you. She said, "Be it unto me, according to God's will." Now, friends, this is the secret. It's not complicated, but it's deep. And the secret is this: to place our lives before God and to desire His will more than anything else. To say to God directly, to say, I want your will, I want your way, I want your, your destiny and your script for my life. And you know what's wonderful is even if we sort of get off the track a little bit, if that's the longing of our heart, it's no big deal for God to direct us back. One final story. In another situation, I also was seeking God for an understanding of something that he had shown me. Actually, it had to do with um, a vision that I received about what was to be done here in Israel, uh, a vision that, that God, in his terms, called Tents of Mercy, which went on and, and became uh, a network of congregations and humanitarian aid. But I didn't know what that meant, and I didn't know what the picture meant that God gave me. And so I went up on Mount Carmel. This is early in our, our time in, in Israel, almost 30 years ago. And I, again, <laughs> walked around all day and, and just being open to God and reading some scriptures and journaling and whatever, and just, but basically saying, I don't know what, what this means. The picture that God had given me was of an oasis. And how is this supposed to be manifested here in Israel? And I'm, I'm just Eitan. I, I, don't, I don't have all the clues that I need. What, what's this supposed to look like? And a non-audible voice of God came to me, again, towards the end of the day, after I had yielded, after I had, you know, all the resistance went away. And the, and the answer was coming, I felt from God, what did I do the last time you guys, meaning Jewish disciples of Jesus, were here? I said, well, I think you're talking about the first century. He said, yes. And I said, I think that's in the book of Acts in the beginning. He said, yes, open it up. Not, again, not an audible voice, but in a strong impression. And I opened the book of Acts. And there, the pattern that was given to the early believers was a pattern of community and serving the larger community, which in this case meant humanitarian aid, meeting the needs of society, but with community as the vehicle to do that. So... This simple key, I believe, uh, if you go before God and say, God, I want your will more than anything else in my life. Please show me, please speak to me, and I will do it. He will speak to you, and you will fulfill your purpose.